the one thing you mentioned this morning, this is a particularly deadly time of year for those that get themselves caught up in house fires. Explain that. Well, we're into the heating season, uh, which is typically starts in October and goes through March each year. Last year, in 2015, January, we experienced the highest number of deaths uh, in the state. So and overall, for the state, we had a high number of deaths uh, for the year. So we kicked off the campaign of Safe and Sound with the intent to focus on the safe aspect. And with that, we're talking about, particularly with the heating season, of people using, if they're using alternative heat sources, doing so in such a manner that they're following the manufacturer's recommendations and use of those devices. Uh, if they're an electronic device, that they're plugging them directly into the wall outlet. Uh, that they're maintaining a safe zone or a child-free zone. In other words, three feet away, um, keeping that, that unit three feet away from any type of combustible materials, uh, keeping children away from it as well so they potentially don't get burnt or hurt. Uh, if it's a fuel, petroleum-based type auxiliary heat, then obviously refueling that unit once it's cooled outside of the home and then bringing it back in. What are, and, and you mentioned this and others mentioned this, what seem to be the chief, I guess, contributors to a lot of the fires that fire services all around the country and in, here in Ohio face when they're dealing with this time of year? Well, truly, uh, heating and cooking are the leading sources of fires, uh, not only in Ohio, but across the United States. And that's why the focus right at the moment is on heating. Uh, obviously, even if you're not using an alternative heat source, you know, we're encouraging people to have the furnaces checked out, typically prior to the, the use season, but now we're into the use season. Um, also, along with that, you know, we're, we focus a lot on the fire safety message, but uh, having not only working smoke alarms, but also carbon monoxide alarms in your home as well, particularly if you're using a, a fuel-based type of, of heat source. The one issue, and we've heard this so many times, for years <coughs> we've been told make sure you have smoke detectors or CO detectors in your homes. But what now the emphasis seems to be on is replacing them every 10 years. Has the message kind of changed or is this kind of one of those where everybody ran out and got smoke detectors but didn't realize there was a time issue here too? I think we all get comfortable in so twice a year, change your clock, change your batteries, we put new batteries in it, we push it, and it works. Once a month, we come along, we test the smoke alarm, like the fire service is telling us to do, and it makes a noise. Uh, and we forget about that, the technology behind that, the, the alarm system, is only good for 10 years. So we have a false sense of security that as I come along, and maybe it's over 10 years of age, and I push the button and I hear something work, that it's still an effective device for me to be using. So yes, I think this is a relatively new message that we're trying to get out to people that these devices do have a, a lifespan to them. And the point of that is that it's from the date of manufacture, not from the date of installation. So you may go to a store and buy a smoke detector that's a year or two old, you have even less lifespan for that device. Potentially, I mean, I'm sure they have a greater turnover than that, but the way you can de determine the age of the unit is on the back side of the unit is the data manufacturer that you can verify that. What a f impact do you see as far as the elderly or the lower income in many of these fires? With the lower income, um, we're finding that they just don't have the resources uh, to purchase a smoke alarm or maybe even replace uh, the battery in a smoke alarm unit that they have. Um, that's why we have partnership with the American Red Cross, working with local fire service to do that door-to-door -door campaign. Uh, one, to provide the message about preparedness and fire safety because truly as you look at our campaign, the Safe and Sound campaign, we want to focus on that, that safe component of it. Let's be proactive, let's take the steps that we can take to prevent those fires. Uh, and then the sound part of it is if, th if that fails for us, then let's have working smoke alarms in our homes to alert us so that we can, we can get out. The other part of that fire safety message is being prepared so that you do have a plan in place that when that smoke alarm goes off, you're getting out of the home, you have a designated meeting place, 
And once you're outside of the home, then you're calling the fire department. Is that, I guess, a real push too? We all talk about the alarms in the homes, but you find families don't always put together the plan of how to respond when that alarm sounds. Well, I've seen that, and I've also seen the fact that they may not stay out. Uh, in fact, as a young firefighter, uh, my first fatality was a father going back into the home to rescue his daughter, and the end result, sadly, was they both perished. So, yes, I think it's having that plan in place, practicing that plan at various times of the day, uh, so that you know how to react and having that common meeting place so you have accountability and let the fire service know when they arrive that everyone is safely out. You're, count, you're, you're partnering here with the Red Cross and the Area Agency on Aging and others like it around the state. What can everyday people do to be proactive to help their friends and neighbors who may be elderly or lesser income to make sure they're okay too? I would encourage them to work with their neighbors who are elderly or maybe disabled and talk to them to make sure that they do have working smoke alarms, offer to test their smoke alarms for them, maybe even verify the age of the, of the smoke alarm unit itself. Um, make sure they have a plan in place on what to do in the event that there's a fire in their home and how they can get out. Uh, these are all very important, they seem kind of common sense, but they're very important messages and things that we can do to help our fellow neighbors.